According to most sources, traditionally there are four techniques that are called kinshiwaza, or prohibited or forbidden techniques in Kodokan Judo. Through the years, the rules of Judo have changed, and these four techniques have been uh, targeted as the ones that uh, are, are not permitted at all in Kodokan Judo, either in competition or even in Rondori in most clubs. So what we're going to do in this video is take a really close look at the pros and cons of these techniques, because each of these techniques are very good in their own right, and they are part of the Kodokan syllabus, even though they may not be permitted in competitive judo. And they're also used extensively in sambo and other combat sports as well. So we're going to take a look at this and how to do these techniques and how they can be used safely and also what to watch out for. So enjoy the video. What we're going to do is do jime. Do means body, jime means to squeeze together. You, you tie them up at the body, then you tie them up at the neck, and you get a tap out, generally from the neck, but boy, it sure hurts the body too. Okay, we're going to do some totally illegal things if you're a judo guy, and, and I would imagine from some of the other combat sports it's not so illegal. I know in Shingitai Jiu-Jitsu we'll use it, and I, I think in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, like you said, in the upper belts they yeah. use it, I'm not certain. But, but uh, what we're going to do is do jime. Do means body, jime means to squeeze together. And originally in old Jiu-Jitsu, feudal Jiu-Jitsu, um, there were different types of shime waza or, or constriction techniques. The body was one area to attack, and the neck or the throat was another one. And there was another one where you just you know, smothered them too, just with your body, you smothered them. But the primary targets were either the, the trunk of the body, the, you know, the body, or the neck. So, and now, and the rules changed, I think, I can't remember what year it was, but the, the Kodakan changed the rules where the dojume was no longer allowed, I think simply because they had some broken ribs. And so they, they just went with the, the, you know, the strangles to the neck and the, the, the constrictions to the neck. So the first one here, uh, you'll see a lot of guys try it. It's the most common one. So Derek has got Mike in what we call dojime. He's squeezing him here pretty good. And he, he's, he's creating some pressure, as you can see, with the, the legs on the trunk, generally at the ribs. Now, that'd be a good one. Let's try like a lapel choke from the bottom, cross lapel choke from the bottom. So that's a, that's a common situation you see that will happen, you know, did, did he squeeze, did, did he tap out from the squeeze to the neck or the squeeze to the body? We don't know, he just tapped out. So that, that's, a, that's a very old thing you'll see in, in certainly in Kodokan Judo and old Jiu Jitsu where a lapel strangle, you know, like a, you know, cr a cross, cross strangle and also with dojume applied, okay? Another way you could do that is with a body triangle. So this is even nastier, so when Derek does a body triangle, and creates that, and that's that's pretty hard. Let me I'm gonna come around behind you. See. Look, look, look at how the body triangle is formed there. Okay. Now, if you if Derek had longer legs, he could wrap his leg or even his, his right leg even tighter and anchor it under Mike. But that's pretty tough to do. Yeah. Changing a piece. Okay, we we're, we're finding a skinnier guy here, everybody. So there there you go. If we can get that in even tighter, and even then, okay, there you go. So you can see a, a body triangle, you know, you know, body sankaku from, the, from that position. And would, would he choke out from the neck or from the body? We don't know, okay? So that's one variation of, you know, the, the dojume from the front. Now another one is from the rear, so you may have rolled them over in more of a seated rodeo ride. Another way is just to really wrap your, hook your ankles together just, just like a body scissor, like a pro wrestler scissor. And now you can get him in a choke or whatever from that position. But you see, is he squeezing from the pressure to the body or the pressure to the neck? Well, you know, yeah, okay, then more than neck. Just but, this time it was here. But it, it adds pressure to the ribs and also to the gut. And it kind of elongates him too. It gives you a, a focal point to like bridge off of. So like that kind of anchors. It gives me something to, to yank back more. Yeah, it makes this a lot more sturdy because he's kind of 
pivoting, pivoting off mm-hmm. that. I right. can't really, you know, like it's not that he's not really going to, to tap for me just going like this with my feet, right? But if I get him crossed, I can actually. And, and that's why you'll see a lot of judo referees. As soon as the ankles are crossed, they'll, they'll assume it's a dojime or, right. or body scissors or body body constriction, which would apply pressure to the trunk, okay? Um, and, and the other one would be, uh, Derek, uh, I know Eric, you've got longer legs. Can you do it on Derek? Can you guys switch positions? I can actually do it. Yeah, you can actually do it from, oh, because he is pretty skinny. Okay. So you can get a dojime with the body triangle there. Just, just look at this. So you can see how he, with his left foot, he anchored under his buttocks. And that's pretty nasty. And you can see how, look at the configuration there, and that is a body triangle. Now, it's really nasty double trouble. So you got a body triangle, and you're going to get him in, you know, pretty much a neck triangle. You're going to do a, the old-fashioned figure four Hadaka Jume. I mean, you know, like we were saying, that's an MMA fighter's dream, isn't it? Yeah. You, you tie him up at the body, then you tie him up at the neck, and you get a tap out, generally from the neck, but boy, it sure hurts the body, too. Even if you don't really have it, like a lot of times, will be here and the guy's got his chin down like this and I can slide this through and then I just bridge him into it. Yeah. It's unpleasant, yeah. Yeah, so you know, there's a lot of pressure on the body. And also that can be applied from the bottom position, like in bottom guard or bottom newaza. Can you guys switch positions, the one between his legs? And um, so basically, you're, you're doing a body triangle. Look, well, you got that, but go ahead and form a triangle. Do, do an actual body triangle. There you go. And you can see from that position, Derek's pretty well sucked in there. He's locked. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah. Enough wiggle room to breathe. There's hardly, and, and that gives, certainly gives Eric more time on the bottom to apply like a, a cross lapel strangle or something like that because it certainly does tie it up. And again, is the Passing's pressure coming from it? What's that? Passing's pretty hard from here, too. Pass, yeah, passing, yeah, you're stuck. You are really in a position there in that body triangle. So again, judo guys, totally illegal stuff. It's one of the kinshi waza or forbidden techniques of Kodokan judo. Um, but because there are, there are neck injuries, there you go. Oh yeah, nice sleep choke. All those cool things. But we were just having fun with it tonight and, and it's something I thought we wanted to maybe video on because yes, totally illegal in judo, but I think it's legal in a lot of other things. Yeah. I know combat sambo, it would be totally yeah, legal. totally legal. So there you go. So anyway, it's uh, dojime or, or body constriction, body squeezing. You know, we call it body scissors, but it's really dojime means body constriction. So there you go. Thanks. Thanks, guys. When you do the kawazugaki guy, which guys, which could, which could hurt, hurt him, you wrap it in here tight. See, it's just like a, a snake around a tree. Okay. Now, if he were to try to do the ojigari and throw him back, he'd probably tear his knee up as he's throwing him backward. Okay, that's why it's banned in judo, okay? Okay, so we're gonna take a look at uh, the kawazugaki. Um, it, our, our variation of it is a, a Kodokan judo type throw where it is pretty much the basic kawazugaki. So Derek, can you grab Mike there and do it? And the idea here is to, when you come in, uh, Derek's gonna wrap with his right leg. And stay there, guys, because I wanna be moving around the leg. And you can see how Derek is coming around here, and you see how the leg is hooked. I'm gonna focus in here, everybody. See how it's wrapped, okay? So you've got that, that, that wrapping action. Right there. Okay. All right. So when when Derek comes into his kawazugaki, he's going to hook the wrap it there. That kawazugaki action basically is parking Mike there. It's anchoring. That that's Derek's anchor onto Mike. Now what he's going to do, he, you notice also the grip. He's got his left hand on the sleeve. Right hand is pretty much a back grip. He's controlling there. You can see the movement there. Okay. Now with, what Derek's going to do, he's going to hop back with his left leg and he's going to sweep his leg and turn into Mike and throw him. This is a Yoko Tsutemi Waza side sacrifice throw in Kodokan Judo. So go ahead and demo, guys. Just you know, boom, right like that. Now, we like to follow through. You, some people will end up differently. We like to land on him to actually, you know, control the movement. We think it's safer to land that way. Okay, that's it right there. So can you do it one more time, guys? So again, when you're doing Kawazugaki, it can be done safely. And return, and there you have it. Okay. So, but, 
So that's, and it's, and that's where it's safe. That's where it's a safe application of it. When we do it like in Sambo or um, you know, other forms of grappling, where we do like a, uh, what the, they call the Carborelli in Judo, we call a thigh lift or Kagagi Nagi actually. Can you demo without killing too badly? So when, because Derek Strong guys with this competition, this wrap here, and watch, see how he lifts and he throws them. Nobody got hurt. Other than a hard throw, <laughs> you know. But he did a beautiful Kawazugaki. See that? There's tied up there. He's locked. Him. What the purpose now of Kawazugaki is he's parking him there. Derek is parking Eric and he's stopping him from moving. So by doing this, it keeps Eric from bouncing around doing something. And you notice he kept, he's had a nice Georgian grip here. And when he's going to stop, he's going to lift. And he's just going to do what's called a Kakagi Nagi or lifting weight and throw like that. And there we have it. So that's legal and it's safe. That's the scene often in Sambo. And you'll see, you can see this in Judo too. And I, freestyle I think, wrestling too. Freestyle wrestling, you'll see this. You'll see the guys wrap each other with the legs. So it's all, it is safe to do that. Okay. But if you do it with the intent of wrapping and throwing them backward, often like an Ochigari, you can tear a knee up. So don't do that. This is a fun technique. Um, a lot of people teach Kani Basami the crab scissors or scissors throw wrong. Okay, that's where injuries occur. Um, you see it really well done in sambo uh, in, in, in some styles of jiu-jitsu, such as our shinji guy. So we, 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 this is one we like. It, it is totally illegal in any form of judo, whether it's the IJF or the AAU rules or freestyle judo rules, because of knee injuries. Uh, people have hurt. He's pretty bad with his broken ankles and legs. So, uh, but the way we're going to do it is safe. It also leads beautifully to a uh, real nice straight uh, leg lock. So, without further ado, uh, whatever grip you're going to use, but generally a good anchor is this here, okay? Because he's got a good firm grip on his lapel, guys, right? And he's probably starting to side quite a bit. So, we're kind of working his angle. He's moved over, and now he's ready, okay? Now what he's going to do, he's going to really get low under, uh, you know, his opponent Jeff in this case, and he's going to swing one leg in front, one leg back, and then shoot back. So there you go. Boom. Now, the way we kind of like it here, we like to throw that leg up front. Some people throw the bottom leg in first. That's where you see some injuries take place, because you can really kind of snap an ankle real quick. So watch what Derek does again guys. This makes it safer and it's quite effective actually. He comes up top of it. He's going to swing out. See that nice and high? Post here. you got to do that. You swing your other leg behind him and catch him. Now you notice he came behind his knees. You can come behind low if you want. There's a great chance of injury when you do that. So the right leg was across pretty much the belt line. The left leg comes behind the knee. See that? There. Plus, what we're thinking about, he wants to get a leg to finish it. So we want it, by having your legs, that left leg a little higher, you can manipulate the, the lower extremities of the legs better. So watch what he does. He comes in high like this, drops, comes across. Now he can start with a straight knee mark. Okay, ankle lock, whatever heel load, whatever he likes. Also, he puts that right leg across, the upper leg across, you see him actually putting that toe back. Yeah, good point, Sandy. Yeah, good point. It's kind of an anchor for it. Let's, let's look at that again. You guys didn't hear that. When he comes across, look at the right foot. He comes across. See, it's, it's an anchor of hooks. Now, as he posts, that's important. But he'll swing behind. His other foot is hooked. See how that? See the foot up here like this? It's not just hung to me. He's using it to really scissor. Okay? What we don't want to see. You can do it, but it's more dangerous to your partner. It's a higher, it's not a higher ratio of success from low. This is okay if people want to do it. He comes up here like this, and he comes low, he catches there. You'll see probably more chance of injuries with that. That's why we come a little higher. Okay, it's a safer technique. It's a cleaner technique. You get more points when you throw a guy like certainly in samba. This could be a four-point move. 
be right into the straight knee bar. So we'll do the throw, but let's do the leg lock as well. So we want to always lead to a submission if we can after the throw. So, you can do that. so watch, guys, here. This is an important part. When he throws them and he takes them down, then watch how he collects it. Very simple. Just collect it, trap it, and lean back. So it's a real simple application to a straight knee bar, or straight leg lock. Here, you're going to watch how he just, see how he hooks? See how he traps? He's on his hip. He's not on his back. And he just arches, he lets it work. So it's a real simple setup. Now, simple is not simplistic or simple, but it just means it's effective. Okay. One more time to go right into the knee bar. Right okay. there, post, okay. quickly. So what you got from a Sambo sense, maybe a sport Jiu Jitsu sense, if they're scoring points for that, it'd be a 4.12, 4 point takedown, right into a submission. That's what we want to leave. Okay. All roads lead to submission. Paraphrase what Jake said about all roads lead to Juju. But that's all roads lead to submission. Okay. We good? Let's practice that. It's a great technique. You see, it's done safely. Let's go. Okay, we're going to take a look at how to do leg lacing. This is ashigurami, everybody. Ashigurami, ashi means leg, gurami means to entangle or to wrap. And from our sambo, we've always called this leg lacing. You're, you're like you're lacing your boots up, and you're, you're lacing up his leg and taking him down. We're going to show the basics tonight. Uh, I'm going to have Derek show a, a quick demo of, of kind of a, a good application of it. Then I'm going to have Eric uh, Weaver come in and, and teach it. So can you demo just a basic uh, hit, just to roll under and, and do a, a move? And that's what we're going to shoot for, guys, right there, okay? So, Eric, can you come on in? And I know you're going to use Mike tonight as your demo guy. So uh, basically what we're going to do is we're going to start on the bottom. So, uh, Eric, if you could just start on the bottom. This is a basic starting position, okay? So, Eric, why don't you take it away, and I will uh, stay out of your way. All right, so we're going to want to slide in and under the opponent. So we're going to butt scoot in a little. As we, as we roll off our butt to our back, we're going to hook under the knee, place on the close hip, and apply some pressure from both this headlock grip, the leg against the other opponent, and the, and the heel, and then the back of the foot. So I'm going to apply pressure in one direction with this leg, and in another direction, or straight up with the other leg, not in the same direction, just opposing direction. And then we're going to clamp over the top of this thing. My toes are under the opponent so that he can't attack my feet. I'm going to hit my side so I can reach into this uh, straight ankle lock right there. Okay. I'll come from a different angle, guys. And... So if I'm, I'm below the opponent, what I want to do is maybe catch a grip, scoot in, plant, wrap that thing up, knock the opponent over. So my toes are under the opponent. I'm, I'm entangling my arm around the leg for that entanglement. And I'm gonna get a handle on it. There's a lot of different handles you can use. I like to just grab myself. So I'm gonna roll to the side and then apply some more pressure. By rolling the side, it also cranks the knee, but it really applies a lot of pressure on that straight ankle lock. So what we wanna do, guys, is start from this basic position. We'll get there from a standing position a little later, but right now we want to start the basics, and this is how we do. Uh, so you really roll under, starting on your buttocks. See how you grab under, swing, come back out, Eric, if you could. He, see how he grabbed Mike's ankles and swung himself under. See how deep he is. Now, when he does that, see how he turned to the side. Now, look at, look at what he's doing. Now, now, watch, can everybody see this? Look at his left hand, how it already hooked Mike's ankle. He's already starting the lock, right? Look at his left leg, wraps on the outside of Mike's knee and pushes the foot on the hip. Can we see that? I'm, I'm gonna get an angle, sorry if I step in front of people. And now look at his right foot. It traps under there and see how his right knee really kind of goes across the body, but his right foot is cocked and he just wraps him down and takes it and finishes. So you're, the Japanese, again, this is one variation of what's called ashigurami. There are other ways to do it, of course, but this is what we consider the most basic application, and it really does work effectively. It really is a good, effective move. So I don't want to be on my back 
when I land because I can only breach so far before I hit the floor. So if I want to lay towards that opponent's leg that's down just so you can roll right on top of it and breach this way where you're not restricted. And you can, you, you can arch more when you're on your hip side, on the side like that. Can you, uh, any of you guys, come on and do the, do the standing position just to start and just, just literally swing under them. Any of you guys like the old pride fights, Sakuraba, Funaki, all those guys that did those really, really cool swing unders? This is what this is, basically. This is really what this is. It is just leg lacing, as we call it here, Ashigurami, or leg entanglement. Okay. Any questions, guys? Okay, let's give that a shot. All right, we're so good. when we're actually sliding in to lace up the leg, uh, the thing to remember for the people that haven't wrestled before or have never tried a double leg is just do a lot. You know, don't, don't pop down like this and grab it because then it's going to be really hard to get your feet through. And don't, you know, kind of like, you know, like walk your, your feet through it. It has to be one, one movement. So go nice and slow. Take a lunge, one knee can be down, catch behind the knees, okay? If you have to, catch the pants, all right? As you get more advanced, whichever one you're attacking, that's the one you're going to grab low and the other one's high. But for now, grab the pants or grab the back of his knees. And as soon as you get that, what you're going to do is you're going to slide this back leg straight through by pulling your hips forward, okay? So, there we go, one big move. And you can see how my hips are past that leg. As Can you show that initial lunge step, Derek? Okay. So I'm right here, and usually it's a, if I can touch him, I can do this move sort of thing. It's not like way back out here. This would be an athletic lunge, okay? So I'm right here, I take a lunge, okay? If you have to put the knee down, grab behind the knees, okay? And then slide that leg through. we got here is a really nice attack if you're the bottom guy like Eric is here against uh, Ben and uh, Ben is swinging the legs past like to get past the guard and the legs and we're coming and lacing up and doing a uh, basically a, you're doing a straight ankle lock from that aren't you or a straight knee bar so he swings by catches and he takes him over all right Eric, let's look at that again. I'll get to stay there in the same position and watch what happens when, when Ben swings the leg by. Look at that catch with the right arm. Actually hooks it with the arm, takes it. Ben, can you do that one more time from that position so the, everybody can see on YouTube? So we've got you swing the legs by. When, see how the catch? And you take him down. That's Eric Weaver doing that. Bye. See how he turns and he hooks. See that right hand hook there at the ankle? He starts to lace, catches the lace, and he takes him down for the straight knee bar.